So in, in sort of the more modern times, um, John Stuart Mill was, was a, a strong proponent of, of the comparative method, and he, had, he used what are called method of agreement and, me and method of, of difference. There are two methods of difference. We'll look at only the direct method of difference here. Um, so Mill wrote, um, when, when you look at the method of agreement, uh, this is what Mill wrote. Essentially, what this means is that you're searching for patterns of invariance uh, across um, potential causal effects. Okay. Um, so you know what you do is you 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 identify all instances of a particular phenomenon, and an investigator then attempts to determine which of these possible causable variables is constant across cases. Okay, and if if you find one that's, that is constant across all cases, that lines up with all instances of a phenomenon, then that is the putative cause. Now, th this seems to be l a lot of jargon, but let's demonstrate with an example based on peasant revolt. Okay, so now, let's assume we have four regions, okay? And these are the regions in which peasant revolt has, has, uh, has occurred. Uh, we have um, peasant revolt, so there you go. They, they've occurred in all four regions. Um, and we have potential causes of revolt. The first is land hunger. Um, the second is the commercialization of agriculture. And the third is peasant communalism. Okay, so now we go along and we, and we, uh, you know, using um, either f secondary or primary research, we determine whether these um, existed or did not in, in each of these regions. And so what we find is for region one, yes, there was land hunger, and no, there wasn't commercialization of agriculture, neither was there peasant communalism. And we do that for the for regions two, three, and four as well. So what we end up with, with is, is this table. Okay, now, uh, so remember to look for patterns of invariance. The method of agreement is looking for patterns of invariance in the causal factors. The causal factors, remember, are these three right here. This is uh, in, in another way of saying this is that these are the independent variables. Revolt is the dependent variable. Okay. Um, so, so the cause is based on our, our this this table right here. The cause is L land hunger. Well, why? Okay. Well, y if we we see um, that um, land hunger is present in all of the regions, as is revolt, whereas. Uh, in in uh, the, the the other two causes in in uh, do not exist in all four regions. So, if if our um, quest is to look for patterns of invariance, uh, here we have uh, invariance. We have the same uh, cause in all four regions, leading to the to the same outcome. Okay. So now another way of conceptualizing the same thing is 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 just using this sort of algebraic language. So we have the following based on empirical observation. In region one, the only remember right back here, the only uh, cause that uh, is present is land hunger. So that's how we uh, signify that. In region two, we have land hunger and peasant communalism. In region three, we have that, and in region four, we have that. Okay, so the conclusion then is, if we're looking for patterns of invariance, the only um, cause that is invariant across all of these regions is L, right? Because C is not because it's it doesn't exist in regions one and two, and P is not as well for 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 similar reasons. Okay, all right. So now, so that's the method of agreement. Now, there are a few problems with the method of agreement. Okay, one is what's called spurious causation, and that is that there's uh, the inability really to establish any necessary link between the cause and the effect. So here, you know, we, we may see that uh, that L causes R uh, in each of these regions, but maybe there's something called S. I don't know, let's, uh, let's assume that there's this other cause that you simply didn't account for that in fact causes L, okay? And then that is what uh, leads to R. So in fact, it's not L that causes R, but S, something S. Okay. And moreover, it could be actually, uh, it could be even, uh, even, um, uh, it could be slightly different in which S doesn't cause L, but causes, uh, uh, doesn't cause all, uh, S causes both L and R. So let's assume that in the presence of S, we get both L and R. Okay. Uh, and that would mean that where we believe that the cause, the putative cause between uh, of, of revolt is land hunger, it's in fact this other thing S which causes both land hunger and revolt. So that's that's what that's what we mean by spurious causation. Okay, so right here, L may be caused by R, blah blah blah. So we can't account for multiple or plural causation. Okay, 
that is maybe some other factor q causes r as well okay uh, so by and this should be by by listing only instances of successful revolts we we're doing what's called selecting on the dependent variable okay and we get no information from negative cases okay so it me this means let's go back to the, uh, the example in table form okay so let's incorporate a couple of negative cases so here we have the original four regions then we have two more regions uh, in which revolt does not occur okay so we're so we're bringing in um, a, uh, regions that are different have different values on the dependent variable which is revolt okay now what about land hunger in each of these regions what do we know about that well let's assume that um, we get a situation in which yes we find in fact in regions five and six we also have land hunger so in this case right if we're looking for the um, uh, if, if, if we're using the method of agreement uh, we can see that in fact uh, it, it doesn't turn out that land hunger is the cause of revolt because in the presence of land hunger we have not only revolt but we have in regions five and five and six no revolt so it can't be land hunger okay so that by uh, by not bringing in uh, regions five and six by not bringing in what are called negative cases right by by uh, not selecting on the dependent variable uh, we can see that land hunger is not um, the cause of revolt but the method agreement doesn't allow us to do that so what do we have to do well we have to go to the direct method of difference okay so what is that well what it does is essentially it's it's the opposite of the method of agreement so here we're we're looking at uh, the circumstance in which alone the two instances differ uh, so if an instance in which the phenomenon under investigation occurs and an instance in which it does not occur have every circumstance in common save that one then the one occurring only in the former blah 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 so essentially what it means is that um, uh, we go back to simple notation, right? Uh, and we'll see based on empirical uh, observation that in region four we have these three uh, uh, causes present, and we have um, revolt. And in region five we have these two, and we have no revolt. So the method of difference looks at which of the dependent variables, independent variables rather, is different, leading to these different outcomes. And and in this one, it has to be land hunger, right? So here, land hunger is the cause of revolt, since when we omit it, right, we have no revolt. Um, so this is uh, the direct method of difference. Okay, so some of the problems with the direct method of difference, you know, getting the case is identical except for one factor, right? I mean, here we would have to we would have to have all the factors that could possibly lead to revolt. Um, we would have to know what their values were in in, in each of the re these regions, and oftentimes it's it's very difficult because we're dealing with theories in social sciences that aren't very uh, well developed uh, and that are that are more hypothetical than real. Okay, um, and this requires and often you know getting cases identical except for one factor typically requires controlled experiments, right? Um, and you know where we can manipulate the putative cause, right? We can make it present in one case and absent in another. And oftentimes we can't do that, right? So we're looking for the, what's called the most counterfactually, most similar world. Um, okay, so I hope that uh, that helps. Some someone understand the comparative method.